Hi and welcome to C programming for Arduino a step by step guide. In previous videos we have discussed byte data type, integer data type, word data type, long data type, float and double data type. Now let's see some more data types. A string is a sequence of ASCII characters treated as a single entity. In other words it is a string of characters. The string data type may be implemented in several ways. The first way is to define the string as a character array. An array is nothing more than a grouping of one or more elements of a data type and have those elements all sharing a common name. In this case, you can define a string like this. It allocates n space for a string with six characters in it. Why six characters and not seven? The reason is because C needs to append a null character to the end of the character array. The compiler uses this null byte to mark the end of the string. Therefore, any string variable is limited to the number that appears within the brackets minus one. In our example, we have set aside enough memory for seven characters because one of those must be used by the string termination byte. We can only use six characters for the actual string data. Arduino C is smart enough to know when to add the null termination byte. For example, all of the following are valid ways to define and initialize a string variable using a character array. Let's discuss these examples. In the first example, as no size is given in square brackets, the compiler figures out how many bytes of storage are needed. Because the name Jane has four characters, it will set aside five bytes of storage to make sure there is enough space for the name plus the null termination character. The second form simply has the code determine the five bytes that are needed, four for the name and one for termination character. The last form reserves a hundred bytes of storage, where the first four contain the characters for the name and the fifth character is null character that terminates the string. This last form would allow you to expand name up to 99 characters in length at some other point in the program if needed. In this case 99 characters would be for the name and last one for the termination character. The second way to initialize a string is on a character by character basis. In that case surround each character with a single quote bar. Each character separated from the next by a comma. Also notice that when you initialize a character array on the character basis, the initialization list starts with an opening brace and terminates the list with a closing brace. In first two examples, we have defined null termination byte. But in these two examples, we have not defined the null termination byte. Notice that compiler is smart enough to know that the null termination character is added, although we have not explicitly defined it. The string data type with a capital S is different than the string data type discussed previously. One difference is that the previous string data type starts with small s and this one starts with an uppercase s. This data type is actually built from the string data type discussed previously but is treated as an object rather than a simple character array. What this means is that you have a lot of built-in functionality with this string data type that you would have to code yourself with a previous string data type. For example, suppose you have a sequence of characters that you read from a sensor into a string variable named my data. Further suppose you need to convert them all to uppercase letters. With a string with small s data type, you would have to write the code to do that conversion. But if you define this variable as a string object, then you could write the conversion simply like this and you are done. The reason this works is because within the string object is a function that contains the code to do the conversion for you. Let's look at it again. This is the variable and this is the data type which has the function. It defines a string named my data with enough space for 99 characters. To use a built in function to capitalize the characters, follow the variable name with a period which is called a dot operator, followed by the function you wish to call. Given table shows some of the built in functions that are available when you use string objects. The void data type really isn't a data type at all. One use for the void keyword is when it is used with functions to show that a function does not return a value. For example, if you look at the LED blinking program, 
then both the setup and loop functions are defined like this. The use of void here means that no data are returned from either of these two functions. Another use of void is to say that no information is passed to the function. In other words, you could write the two functions like this and the program would compile and run exactly as before. Virtually, all of the basic data types support arrays of those types. We have already seen examples of character arrays. The following statements show some other array definitions. Each of these statements define an array of a specific type. We will discuss array in detail when we will discuss about pointers in the coming videos. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Take care and goodbye.